in the morning, US. everybody. Morning, Craig. Morning, Craig. Morning. Good morning, Greg. Good morning. to see you. Every, good to see everybody. Welcome to our uh, Europa Property oh. Retail Forum, uh, online retail forum. Uh, I know for a lot of you, it's a bit early and, uh, and that are coming in from the U.S., but yeah. thanks for joining us. Uh, Gary, good to see you. Thank you for sponsoring uh, this this forum. Uh, fit for, con for, for, for Commerce, thanks a lot. Good to see you. And I know Bernadine is on. Thank you as well. So uh, great to- Yes, yeah, she's just having problems with video. Yeah. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Perfect. Yep, all Excellent. Good. Excellent. All right. Well, I see we've got- Hi, James. Hi, guys. How are you? Yeah, good. Great. Hey, James. Great to see you. Hi, I, see James. Hi, I see we've got 26 on or 26 on Zoom. I see we've got now over 100. Looking at my other screen here, we've got over 100 on uh, LinkedIn. Um, and I don't know, another looks like 32 on, on Facebook. So great, we'll get started. Um, it's like an online auction, uh, Craig. What's that? <laughs> like an online auction, you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's like I'm selling something, right? Well, yeah. you know. <laughs> as long as it's not me. Yeah, I was going to say. Yeah, exactly. Well, um, great. You know, again, good to see y'all. We've only got an hour, and, you know, we want to get through a lot of interesting things. And what I'd like to do first is just start by, um, I'll, by, by saying welcome and also welcome to our audiences on all the platforms um, on, on LinkedIn and on Facebook as well and of course on Zoom so thank you for joining us and I'd just like to kick it off by you know I think we'll start with uh, Bernadine as you're kind of sponsoring our event today tell us a little bit about your company about yourself about your company what you're doing and uh, and also uh, Gary will have you go next as well yeah okay great Thanks. Can you hear me all right? Yeah, we just can't see you, but we can hear you. Okay. Uh, yeah, just having a little bit of um, technical oh, difficulties are. here. Uh, yeah. So. Saw you for a moment then. <laughs> yeah, you were there for a minute. Okay. Well, in the meantime, um, uh, founder and uh, CEO of Fit for Commerce, we've been in business for over a dozen years. Uh, we like to think about ourselves as digital accelerators. We have helped uh, hundreds of brands, retailers, uh, malls and shopping centers accelerate growth through digital. Uh, we are a boutique consultancy and uh, we are in the business of growth. Um, it's interesting times right now for sure. And a lot of what our clients are telling us is that uh, they either wish they had doubled down on digital or are really glad that they had double down on digital, given uh -huh. the, the, the uh, coronavirus and uh, uh, times of uh, lockdowns and uh, social distancing and contactless uh, type of shopping. Uh, our clients are brands and retailers that uh, tell us that right now more than ever, it's important to keep in touch with, um, with their customers to continue to grow their customer base, even though it's quite challenging times. Yeah. We also work globally with uh, quite a number of investment firms and technology firms as well. And uh, we're really excited to be a part of this webinar um, in thinking about, you know, retail and, um, uh, and the customer during these times as well as after COVID. Although I'm not sure there's such thing as a post-COVID. I feel like we're gradually going to morph into sort of a new normal. But thanks for having us, Paul. Yeah, great. Well, thanks to have you. Gary, I know you're both up early this morning. Gary, how good to see you again. Welcome. Yeah, good morning from New York. Uh, I was up at 4 a.m. It's now 5 a.m. So, uh, so Gary Burrows, uh, Managing Director of Mouths and Meeting Places at Fit for Commerce. Uh, after 30 years in the, uh, in the physical side of Mal uh, property and asset management, I moved over to Fit for Commerce which is the, uh, the digital side of things. Um, we're working quite, uh, quite hard to merge the digital and the physical in, uh, in one ecosystem to, uh, to, to accelerate uh, growth from both the digital and merged physical retail singularity. 
Okay, great. Um, hey, uh, James, we'll jump to you right now. I, the malls, have, for those of you that may not have opened, the malls have, have opened or opened partially in Poland yesterday, and I was at uh, Zwati Terrasa, one of the bigger ones, and also Arcadia, um, just to see how things were, were going there. <laughs> James, are you guys open now in the malls that you're ma managing, and how is that? How was the first day? I can say. Yeah, um, it was. It was good. Thank you, Craig. Um, yeah. We've had a um, very positive um, response. Um, uh, well, I'm collating all the actual football figures and, and other comments right now, so I can't give you all of those. But I, I would say um, that everything came back um, very um, positively. People were shopping in various um, shops. One of our centers, 4F, said they were at 90% of their regular sales. Um, yeah, I imagine there'll be a little bit of curiosity and everything going along. Um, then, of course, at the end of the day, I don't know whether you guys have picked up, but um, there was a series of um, bomb scares around um, Poland and the shopping centres. <laughs> bomb scares. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, no, I missed Apparently, that. Sorry. It's not. It's not the first. It's not the first time. Um, and because it's the same centres, and it's not not just Sierra Belmain centres. There are a number of others um, that. Uh, um, have been hit um, with with threats, um, but there was a few uh, 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 yeah I, I think it's the same guy that that struck twelve eighteen months ago um, same person right right we we, we did think we did think it was an, we did think it was Amazon we we thought maybe it was Amazon or some other digital company but uh, you know. <laughs> Well, well, now if we get all cut off, we'll know what happened. Uh, yeah. Exactly. No. Um, um, but yeah, it's like say so that that was sort of towards the end of the day. Um, it, it it didn't really have any any great impacts. So generally speaking, uh, good positive response. People were um, uh, were were um, you know calm. Uh, everything was well prepared. I have to give a good shout out to to. Um, not only um, our, our staff on sites for getting these things ready, but the retailers and the cooperation we've had with them has been absolutely fantastic. Um, mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so we, we're very pleased that um, you know that, that it wasn't a, uh, a a negative experience, but a rather uh, sensible and positive one. Right. Okay. Well, great. Great. Um, hey, Tomish, good to see you. I know you've been having a lot of retail meetings because I've read a lot of your your posts and uh, so tell us a little bit about yourself, what you guys have done or what you, what you do and then kind of your, your perspective on the market over the last, you know, what, 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 what do you see happening? Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a quite uh, a tough time for everybody at the moment and um, uh, from, from our side, uh, we try uh, everything that uh, when people come back to the, to the two malls, especially in the end of the year, which is a very important time for all the retailers. Uh, that they feel good, that they um, come in an environment uh, they, they want to stay. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, at the moment with all those masks and um, <laughs> all those different things, uh, you, you don't get this uh, typical shopping feeling. And I think uh, when uh, uh, soon in Austria, the, in the 15th of May, we will open the restaurants and, and bars uh, till uh, 11 o'clock. And okay. then it's, I think it will get easier uh, for all the malls and for the people to to come to a quite norm normality, not not the same as before. But uh, after seven weeks, I I have been now seven weeks at home, uh, home office. You you have the feeling now that the people want to go out, that the people want to come back uh, a little bit unsecure what what's coming. But uh, I have heard from a lot of people they already ordered a place in the restaurant because uh, it's not anymore like it was before you just go there and sit down you need to order a place so hopefully that will help us that the economic is going on governments did good jobs all over europe but now we need to let's say to, to boost a little bit uh, the economic and uh, uh, don't speak too much about uh, coronavirus uh, more uh, give the people a good feeling talk about what's going on and coming back and uh, also, government needs to do this because uh, every day the, the TV is full, uh, newspapers is full of Corona, Corona. I think uh, we, we we need to go 
to, 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 to with optimi optimistic way in, in, in the future. Right, we're, we're ruining our own, we're, we, we gotta create our own environment. So Anya, it's good to see you. Thank you for, for joining us. I was in your store last night, actually, and uh, I imagine is, is global um, council for CCC, you must have been rereading and kind of doing a lot of uh, negotiations with landlords at this time, I, I would imagine. That's, that's correct. Good morning, everybody. Um, uh, Anna Tanasov, I'm General Counsel for CCC Capital Group. We are the shoe, like the biggest shoe retailer in Europe, I believe. And we operate on different 25 markets as of now, mm -hmm. both offline and online, but um, mostly offline still. So most of our stores were shut down, you know, in mid March until now in uh, different countries and uh, as you Thomas mentioned in Austria for example everything was shut down and Switzerland those countries to which they said let's say reacted as quickly as could have and uh, including Poland uh, that the shops were like closed for you know a couple of weeks the Hungary uh, was the latest of the countries to shut down the stores I believe so Yes, we negotiate a lot, Craig. We we fight a lot now, and we we switch to online. Right. So, have you opened? Have you opened all the stores, or ninety percent, or fifty percent? I noticed no, some are not all of them. Not all of them in Poland. Uh, I think most of them in mm -hmm. other countries not yet because it's it's not allowed in Hungary. It is in um, mm -hmm. parts of Hungary. It is, but not not in all the countries. No. Right. So the places that you're allowed to open, you've opened. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yes. yeah, we're great. Right, right. Wolfgang, great to see you. Actually, I can see you on two cameras now. So you oh, must, that's bad. You so must I, have I have a have super to... studio in your, uh, in your, your house to be, uh, I, I, I would probably start doing that as well. So you can see. <laughs> so, okay. I, I have to switch off one. So sorry for that. Good, good to see you and tell us a little bit about, uh, your company and also what you're doing and what what's happened in the last few weeks with you guys. Okay, hello dears. Uh, this is Wolfgang Moller. I'm representing Erste Group Bank AG, which is a, a, a banking group which is primarily active in the eastern part of CE. That means of the EU, which means we are mainly uh, focused on CE and we have less of exposure towards the, the so-called other part of, of EU. Mm -hmm. uh, we have been doing uh, business as a meaning in the real estate side, what I'm representing. Uh, before COVID, we will do it now and we will do it afterwards. Mm -hmm. Mainly we have been uh, focused uh, till the end of, of March, more or less, mm -hmm. with waivers and, and helping our clients uh, to find ways because they are having problems with covenants, uh, paying uh, interest sometimes paying repayment mm -hmm. there have been a lot of, of regulations in, in in the countries which are coming up the problem is that they haven't been harmonized which means that in all countries we are having more or less a little bit different uh, moratoriums which we have to cope with which makes life sometimes not easy but we found ways to support our clients and so far we have supported all customers and all clients found uh, together with us ways uh, how we uh, handle the situation uh, for the first quarter and we are right now working on the second quarter uh, waivers and, and other things because we don't think that the situation will be over in the next weeks or months that it will take longer uh, to to get back to a kind of uh, normal as it was before COVID. So uh, we are seeing uh, really a, a lot of work ahead. Uh, and uh, yes, what uh, I think it was Paul mentioned, uh, there should be a, a positive attitude, which is true, but we should not forget that we should try to avoid by any means that you have a second lockdown because that would hurt then each of us uh, on, on, on that side, on all sides most so the, the, the find, finding a balance between health and, and economy will be a challenge yeah i mean a second lockdown would be just another disaster that if we can avoid it 
at least economically as well would be great. Um, Jan, great to see you. Thank you for joining us. I was, uh, I, I, I noticed that, you know, I was, when I was walking around the malls today, I was thinking, or yesterday, I was thinking about you as well. Um, tell us a little bit about what, what you guys are doing and, and if, if you have any stores open at the moment, and if so, how are they doing? Yeah. Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm Jan Hamel from Czech Republic, from Prague. Mm. Uh, we operate a juice bar chain in like, across three countries, Czech Republic, Slovak, and Hungary. Uh, the majority of our stores uh, is uh, closed right now. We had to close uh, 13 of uh, March, majority of our stores, and we switched to uh, online. So we uh, start uh, e-shop uh, over the weekend. Uh, during two days, we built a e-shop, we aggregate uh, orders uh, during one day and deliver the next day. And that's uh, our biggest channel right now. We still have opened about three to five stores in Czech Republic. And uh, from Prague, we, we are now getting ready for a reopening of shopping centers next Monday. I think the same will be with Budapest stores or Budapest shopping centers. And uh, we are waiting for 20th of uh, May for Slovakia. Oh, great. So then you'll be, you'll start, be able to start opening them on, like really next week, I guess. Yeah? Hopefully, hopefully. Well, I know when we were talking last January, you were talking about buying out some competition and I would imagine they're a little bit more flexible on price now, I would think. Yeah, I would say our product is more relevant right now uh, mm -hmm. because we sell vitamins uh, in a liquid form in bottles or cups. So I believe that uh, our product uh, will be relevant even more after the crisis. And we also watch the opportunities and uh, we, we were ready to enter Poland in May, but it was postponed because of uh, this crisis. And I hope uh, we just come back to it really soon, but it depends on the sales after the reopening. I think everyone just waiting uh, for news. I heard the news from uh, Germany that the first week was uh, okay, like 80%, but the second week there was a drop of sales uh, to 60. So we will see and let's wait a couple of weeks. What yeah, brings. That's, that, that, that is true, Jan. The, the, um, our, our colleagues in um, at Sonice Aero operate centers in Germany have said the same thing. And I think our expectation is very much on that front. But um, as I said, I think, you know, curiosity and, and people wanting to, you know, stretch their legs and, and visit old friends in shops, mainly shoes, um, you know, they, uh, they bring people back. But I think, you know, everyone will be sensible. I think this fear about, as Wolfgang mentioned, the, um, in the, the potential of a second wave, I think, is, is you know, untenable. It's not. Um, so. Yeah. But, uh, I, I would say I see the huge change of behavior of uh, people in Czech Republic over the last five, seven days in terms of it's much more optimistic. They are not uh, frightened. They, they uh, look like more comfortable in their habits in terms of shopping, in terms of going to office. So I keep be optimistic and we all have to show our customers that it's not a disaster to go to the shop just and to help the environment maybe through influencers and online that it's safe to go shopping and just to promote uh, this behavior as safe as before. Yeah. Um, Bernadine, a question on that question to you is what can developers or what can shopping center owners do and retailers do to drive, to drive digitally to drive traffic to the malls. What sort of solutions do you have for that? Well, I think that hopefully uh, no one has lost touch with their customers through all of this uh, period. And uh, if uh, you know brands, retailers, uh, shopping centers are not already in communication with uh, their customers digitally, then you're probably already behind. Um, I think that in these reopenings, you know, this is a chance to 
um, add back the physical engagement, but really we should be always speaking with our customer in all channels, all devices, in you know whatever, uh, as we say, omni-channel way that our customer is open to engaging with us. So certainly in uh, the US um, and uh, on the global front, uh, we hope that uh, anyone that hasn't been, you know, sort of um, uh, engaging and communicating and being authentic in that communication with customers um, is probably a little bit behind. Uh, and as, uh, as you guys open up one by one, I think it's important even more so to be uh, transparent and authentic in that communication and, and say uh, that you're excited to be open, that there is still you know, caution and um, uh, restrictions in, in play, uh, but that you are welcoming uh, everyone back uh, in as much as possible. I think it's also important to go back to some of the basics around customer uh, customer experience and knowledge of, of the customer and using the data that you have, hopefully uh, during this period of, of lockdown, maybe uh, you've spent more time segmenting your data, understanding your customer so that you can speak to him or her more personally, um, be that you know for digital or physical. And uh, that way when you welcome him or her back, you're still speaking to her uh, in uh, uh, in a segmented, personalized way that I think that she's come to expect. And of course now, uh, I don't think we're going back to where we won't have curbside pickup and um, buy online pickup in store collect. So all those capabilities and channels are are just as important uh, even upon opening. Yeah, and I Gary, would imagine you also just that? letting, yeah, I'm sorry. I would imagine also just letting people know what new stores are opening every day, right? So as, I mean, in, in uh, you know, in um, Arcadia and Zwati Terrasa, I mean, there were certain ones that were open in one place. And for example, McDonald's was open in one place and not the other, or different shops were open. But, uh, you know, if you could, I think by digitally letting clients know or customers know, hey, this just opened and something new's happening, yeah? I mean, you can do this with your systems, I would imagine, yeah? Yeah, I think one of the big problems is uh, is, is, is lack of communication. Um, certainly in the US, when I've, I've been out, um, it says on the website that a store's open, you get there and it's closed, or they've ch suddenly changed the, uh, the opening times. Um, so yeah, there's, there's a certain amount of, uh, of frustration with that, and the, uh, the greater the clarity, the, the better the communication and the interaction with the customer there's in some interesting statistics there's a massive um i think 60 percent increase in contactless um purchases mm -hmm. and um there's an increase to 45 pounds uh purchase price for contactless in the uk um so yeah some i think there's a there's a triple digit increase in um in curbside pickup and uh, grocery shopping is a, is, is, a, is a massive increase. And I think a lot of that grocery shopping, as people get used to that and that becomes the norm, um, a, a lot of that will be, will be fairly sticky. So, what, so, so get, get, just a quick, quick question. Jason, welcome. Thank you, for, thank you for joining us. I mean, a decade ago, I was at many of your, your grand openings and in, uh, in, uh, shopping centers that were that were happening. Um, tell us a little bit about what you guys are doing now and, and sort of the, the, uh, the experience of the last couple of days. Well, in, in terms of what we're doing now, we're still looking at, looking at the market from an investment perspective. You know, I think you have to take, you know, if you, if you take a, a look at a plot of land today and you ask what's the best use, um, it's very rare that you would have retail as the answer. Um, and that's because of development costs and where you're going to underwrite a, a shopping center in terms of its rents. Um, development uh, right now doesn't really make an awful lot of sense. But from an investment perspective, we were on the hunt over the last 12 months, looking at different options because pricing had become quite attractive. This was pre-corona. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I, I think it's important that people are aware. I mean, there's a lot of discussion about protecting retailers, and I think that's, that's very important. But if people are forgetting the, the owners and the developers and what motivates them and why they take the risk in the first place, plus all of the, the employment they create in the construction phase and in the operations phase. Um, and what they do for, for in, in many smaller cities with populations of 
you know, 100,000 to 200,000, what they've actually brought to those cities. But if I give you a simple example so people can understand the sums, if, if say four years ago, I, I bought a, a shopping center for 100 million and I bought it at a 6% yield, so my net operating income was, was 6 million, and I decided to be conservative and finance that with 50 million of debt, okay? So 50% LTV, Erste Bank would be very happy with a deal like that, nice and conservative, right? <laughs> If, you, if that shopping center was designed in, along the traditional way where you had a food anchor, but primarily most of your anchors were fashion, so Inditex Group, H&M, LPP, et cetera. Um, if you followed the trend over the last three or four years, your net operating income has probably trailed off by about a third. So that's six million is probably four million today. This is pre-corona. Post-corona, we, we simply don't know yet. Mm -hmm. if, if you look at where yields have gone over that period, Whereas I bought the center for 6%, today it might be 10%. If I capitalize 4 million at 10%, that's a valuation of 40 million. My debt's 50 million. So even though I was conservative in, in leveraging my transaction four years ago today, I'm in the hole. And I think what a lot of people don't realize or don't appreciate, and I think this is why a lot of the owners and investors are getting a little bit upset, is because you know, there's no real rallying, no, no one is really rallying around the investors to try and, try and figure out how they fix these, uh, these, these problems um, because you know, most of them will have used leverage um, and even those using conservative leverage like in that example are probably in negative equity and are dealing with the banks on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, look, there's no, there's no doubt in my mind that there's, you know, when I was coming onto this panel, I was kind of nervous because I was thinking, well, th there's no real obvious long-term solution that's homogenous for everybody to employ. So everything is you know, case by case. And that's certainly the case that the likes of James in, in Sierra, Sierra, Sierra Maine, you know, even though people might say he might be a little bit hefty in his, in his fees, he's certainly earning him in this environment. You know, there's no question about that. So, um, look, you need, in, 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 so, so we're very, very cautious about the investment landscape. Um, and you know, it's, as James said, it's very early days in terms of operations to see how things bounce back. You know, the big question mark I think everybody has on their, in their heads today is discretionary spend. When people go back from their furloughs into their jobs, will they, be, will they feel like they have a permanent position? Will they feel like spending discretionary spend? And that's really the key to, to, to figuring out how well shopping centers will bounce back post, post COVID. Yeah. Can, I, can I add to that, Joyce? Uh, thank you. The, um, uh, yeah, it, it, it is interesting, the discretionary spend uh, element. Uh, and it, uh, this is where it gets weird because obviously, you know, with, uh, Aeroplane capacity is being, you know, probably, you know, dropped by um, half, you know, in, in terms of, you know, the schedules, long lead up times at airports, uh, which we're going to be seeing, you know, that some people say you need to be at airports some, some four hours before the flight on much reduced capacity flights. I mean, what, what the hell is going to happen with, you know, the, the Poles are one of the biggest travellers in Europe, you know, what, what happens in Czech as well, you know, what, 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 what happens with, um, you know that, that those those holidays spent, it's not going to be so easy to to to, to go away or cheap. You know, are are the discount airlines going to go? So you know, does that money come back into the the, the domestic economy? I don't know. Um, but to take your broader point, um, and you know, I mean, some of what we've been doing anyway. I, I think as a business is watching. You know. Um, a reasonably slow decline, as you, you you nicely pointed out there, Jason. That you know over you know that twelve month period, um, you know the, the, the NOI declining because of the you know the impact of online or just the, the irrelevance of some formats of shopping, um, you know uh, as as well. We've been watching where that's going and making sort of plans. And and one of the the, the, the things that we've been saying as a business is look. You know, we're we're talking uh, you know about creating the future, not just talking about it. In in other words, you know, what is coming around the corner? How should we be planning for it? Unfortunately, the the future has just hit us smack bang in the face. It's here, right? And um, you know, it's a, it's an interesting scenario for um, some that know. I mean, we we do quite a bit of work out um, uh, for uh, lenders as well in in that in the situation you described, the pre-COVID situation where things, where competition has taken over um, other centres uh, as well as other factors in the economy. Um, and with those workout scenarios, um, it, it's put 
a lot of pressure on how we can adjust um, to um, this world now where there's been zero rents and, 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 and service charge, yet we've got leases, we've got obligations with our retailers, we've got obligations to our customers. And, um, you know, so how we, how we rebuild um, that back up when we don't have any, um, any, any knowledge. One of the things that sort of struck me was, um, you know, the term foreseeable future is now a complete contradiction in terms. <laughs> the future is coming, but it's certainly foreseeable, and there's nothing you can nothing you can do to look at. So, in in our shop, what we're doing, as as well as um, you know, the the slow process now of, of agreeing individual positions with individual retailers on individual centres, um, is um, you know, it's going to take us all a lot of time and and, and effort, and uh, we, we we hope we'll get there. But at the same time, we're looking at well. You know, to to what degree do we need to, you know, repurpose um, some of these assets? Some some are probably going to face full repurposing. Some are going to face partial, but most of them are going to face partial repurposing. But the, the the thinking and the planning for that has to start now, and that's what, you know, um, we'd be saying to well, certainly with our um, our investors, but also to the market that, you know, we need to be looking at what those what what a future might be. What would be the the, the ideal type of uh, environment to start looking at? Um, you know, addressing all commercial property. I mean, you, you can't tell me that offices are not going to suffer with this. You know, what about logistics? You know, this is one of the, this is one of the crazy things. Logistics. Says, oh, it's great. It's all online. Well, no, it's not. Because what about logistics for car manufacturers and for um, you know for for um, components for aircraft and, and, you know, these types of things. Those are tenants too that are in these buildings. We've got a lot to think about and we've got a lot, a lot to start planning for and it won't happen overnight unless we start really digging in now and doing that. Yeah, uh, James, could I, I just ask one question to, to James? Um, as over the past uh, 10, 15 years, we've, uh, we've seen a, a significant increase in leisure, entertainment and F&B. Um, as, how has that hit you in terms of uh, cinemas? Uh, what's happening with cinemas? Well, it's, uh, it's, it's, F and B. What, what's how's that? Uh, how's that panning out? And and will that kind of uh, be as part of that repurposing that you're talking about? Yeah, it, it will. I, th I think I think that there's a long-term future for for for, for leisure. Um, I think you know it's going to take a while before um, you know people want to go in. Uh, Sit in a <laughs> even with um, plus you, yeah. Thanks. Yes. <laughs> Thank God for the screen. Good, good you're <laughs> far away. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah. Look, I, I think I think the, the build up on that, Gary, is going to be slow, um, but I think they're going to be essential. I mean, pre um, pre this crisis, we, we were trying to evaluate it, it, any commercial building in in sort of seven. Um, seven ways, and, and that is kind of retail, entertainment, leisure, lifestyle, workspace, culture, and um, and, and logistics. And when I say logistics, I'm talking about uh, omni-channel or digital, um, taking um, what you guys are, uh, are looking at doing, and, and the integration of those uh, elements together, you know, kind of creates community. And I think one thing that um, this crisis has shown us is our community is probably stronger than ever, or at least the, the feel that we, we want, you know, if we are belonging to something that's greater than, um, uh, you know, greater than the individual. And I think there are lots of things to take out of that. And I think unless, you know, we, we've all done our Netflix, um, so maybe we're gonna be a bit sick of sitting down and watching a movie, but um, so I, I don't think they're gonna be um, irrelevant. In fact, some of the things we're talking about, uh, bringing back good old drive-ins, um, so, you know, we'll be talking to, um, you know, our, our operators and, and saying, well, look, can we, you know, get people back on, on, on watching your films and keeping your brand alive and going on, on those sort of things. But yeah, it's going to take a while. Um, but I think those components, to cut a very long part short, um, are going to be still vital for any future planning, but maybe just I think designs. I think one thing you guys are pointing out is that there's definitely going to be winners and losers 
And those winners and losers are going to come in the form of different businesses or business models or uh, product assortments. And certainly from, um, you know, some of our clients' perspective, uh, many, many may not be standing. Uh, I think as you look at your portfolios or just like the way a retailer would look at their uh, stores or um, different business lines that, you know, now again is, is the time to really think hard about where that investment should go. Um, we've, you know, we've seen some of our brands and retailers talk about, you know, curbside pickup or digital in store or um, click and collect for years. And, you know, the IT manager says it's going to take three years and it's going to take millions of dollars. And, oh, guess what? All of a sudden, some of them figured it out in two weeks, three weeks time. Um, there's been innovation and kind of because we, they've had to, right, for survival. Uh, and so I think also what's going to drive the winners and the losers is that changed pace of innovation and adoption that is, uh, is happening right now and is going to need to uh, accelerate even more. Are you guys seeing the same thing? Well, yeah, I mean, we wouldn't have done an online conference. We would have had it at a big <laughs> hotel and had lots of uh, drinks and parties and all <laughs> to go around it. Um, Carolus, I, thanks for joining us. I, I've been by several of your of your properties, and it seems like there's always about um, 200 people waiting outside to get in. So I don't I don't know if this is great business for you or if it just looks like it. But tell us a little bit about. Thanks for joining us. Tell us a little bit about yourself, about your kind of investment strategy, and what because I know a lot of your places have been open, and what's what's happened in that that end. Absolutely. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Carlos Adlis. I represent WP Carey, a uh, New York listed uh, sales specialist. I'm based in London and I'm responsible for the investments in the European region. Uh, and, uh, you know, we just released our Q1 results for 2020. Uh, we have collected 95% of the rent, which I believe and from my research is significantly above average comparing to our peers. Uh, our businesses uh, are doing well, you know, in the countries where they've been closed, they still manage to pay rent. In the countries where they've been open, they're recording record sales. So our retailers, like grocery retailers, are recording uh, record sales. Our DIY retailers are recording record sales in markets across Europe. It seems like people who are forced to stay home are becoming creative and uh, deciding to fix up their apartments and their houses and, and, and definitely spend a lot of money on DIY stuff. Uh, another uh, observation is that our, you know, electronics retailers are also recording record sales. So it seems like there are certain players in the market that were well positioned that had uh, strong online platforms and are able to take full advantage of the lockdown and of the Corona crisis. So that's one observation. The other thing, I think, like you guys mentioned, there will be winners and losers in this crisis, and 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 for some. Uh, operators who, who, who did not have an online platform, who were not able to remain open and who sort of is like a perfect storm for certain retailers, of course, will be a bit more difficult. But for other players, I think they'll come out a lot stronger out of this than they came into the crisis. And we're definitely witnessing that. Uh, the other opportunities for us as a sales back specialist, we definitely already are seeing uh, a lot of companies more so in the fashion retail coming to us for, for sale leaseback opportunities uh, to raise liquidity, uh, to, 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 to you know, sh shore up their balance sheets, uh, become stronger and weather the storm. So we're definitely seeing that as well. But they're, the retailers are doing sale leaseback on, on the manufacturing plants they have or on what, what exactly? Uh, the, the one we saw and the, the one I can share, which is public, is, for example, Next uh, in the UK. They, uh, they, they came to do a sale leaseback on their headquarters and their logistics side as well. So oh, okay. Not mm -hmm. But on their, you know, prime, prime real estate. And they are able to secure amazing yields, which to my mind are a bit mind boggling and, you know, really, really tight yields. Another transaction that I saw is happening in the market is in the Southern Europe. A very strong retailer uh, is doing a sale leaseback for a portfolio of their stores. The yields again are sub 5%. Uh, so for certain markets, for certain players, there, there's definitely demand and uh, you know, the market is, is liquid. For other things, of course, it's different. Again, I cannot comment on, on shopping malls. That's not our business as we only do 
single tenant assets. So uh, that's that's my specialty. So, so what countries? Um, what countries are your your like DYI and your big uh, uh, supermarket? What countries are they closed in? So uh, I know uh, groceries obviously open everywhere. DIY was closed in the Baltics initially, but then they reopened. Uh, in most European countries, DIY remained open. Like in Netherlands, it was open. In UK, it was open uh, most of the time. Uh, I think it's open in Poland as well. We're obviously doing really well, like you said. Uh, so I think most of the European countries, DIYs were open uh, and only few few pocketed markets that they had to close for a short time, but they reopened soon. Also, DIY retailers became very... Uh, creative uh, and they started stocking some food products that doesn't go off and that's how they managed to reopen the stores so you know businesses are creative and people are smart and they find ways around to to to, to remain relevant and remain active in the market that's for sure right so you start selling some canned goods and you're now open yeah something like pretty that much, pretty much we saw some retailers starting to sell milk that does not go off and uh-huh. some sort of sweets and candies and that they managed to sort of wiggle the way around it and reopen. And yeah, I mean, it worked out well for them. I think one, one thing like you mentioned logistics, uh, you know, how that will change. And I think, you know, online penetration in, in, in Western markets, like, you know, like UK or US has been very strong already. And the online penetration, online retail penetration in, in more CE markets was quite low. And when I speak with agents, you know, in Poland, they say, well, no one's really shopping online. People like to go to the stores. Maybe it's because of the weather, maybe because of whatever reason they like going to the shopping malls and, you know, online penetration is going to be low. And I think Corona really changed that. People realized that, you know what, I can actually buy jeans online and I can buy my bucket or whatever I need to buy online. And people realize that it works. And I think that's definitely going to increase. So there's going to be a strong push for more logistics, I think, in the region. That's for sure. Uh, the prices will probably be affected because of that as well. So I think there, there are definitely new themes that will come out of the crisis. Yeah, I mean, there's got to be a lot a lot of new people. I mean, my mom is sort of first, first online shopper. Two months ago, she would have never bought anything online. Now she's buying everything. And I think uh, probably when it, you know, at some point when things get back to some level, she'll still buy a lot of things online. So I think, I think it just took this to, to break it. Um, Anya, we were talking about rents a few different times. Tell, tell us what you can about, let's say, the situation in Poland and with, with certain stores. How are you deciding what the rent should be or what is the negotiations with, uh, we've got loads of shopping center. I see on the uh, LinkedIn list that's coming up here, we have a lot of shopping center owners, but also a lot of retailers probably just wondering what, is, what should the rent be, let's say? How do you even begin to decide? Absolutely. Uh, well, I, I, again, I work on the investment side, so I more deal with you know, uh, deploying capital and I deal a lot less with the asset management side of the business. But from what I hear and what I understand, it's, it's a relationship. You know, sell lease back business and what we do is a relationship business. You know, the leases that we sign are 20 year, 20 year long leases. So you know, it's always a discussion. So you always want to come with a sort of cooperative approach so that you, know, you don't want the, the, the tenant to go bust because they can't pay the rent. But you also want to give a free rent period for the tenant who has loads of capital available and just trying to use the situation to their benefit. So we've seen, we've seen both. I think we, we try to make tenants pay where they can pay, and it's a discussion where they can't. Right. And Anya, to you, with <laughs> so many stores you have at uh, CCC, how are you guys deciding which stores to open? What should be the rent? I mean, how do you, how do you, how are you, are you gauging this by by the sales per day, or what is your strategy? Well, um, depends on the country and depends on the land road. <laughs> yeah. Right. So, well, let's say Warsaw. Let's start with Warsaw and in Poland. Yeah. Well, um, I take care mostly of the foreign markets, so right. Poland and then Polish. But uh, in Poland, as you probably know, we have terminated uh, some of the uh, lease contracts. Mm-hmm. So I think it was. Um, I don't want to, you know, say too much, but I think it was mainly for uh, to bring us to the table, to sit mm-hmm. down and discuss what you are just uh, mentioned, Craig. I mean, rent and all the payments, because um, most of the oh, retailers they they would like probably to focus now on uh, turnover rent, 
Right. Uh, yeah, just keep it like uh, on the turnover, not on the base run, not uh, the level of service charges as it was before COVID. So this is one point. Another point is to, to keep the costs uh, as low as possible because the, the traffic, I believe, would never be the same this year. Probably, maybe not the same even next year. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know what are your expectations or, you know, for, let's say, plans, but, but I believe that it will, it can't say, we can't say it will be 50. So we can't base our rent or payments on the traffic because it's unforeseenable and I think it will not be the same. The other thing is that everyone, and as Jasonson mentioned, yeah, everyone got hit the retailers, the, the developers, the, the lenders, everybody. So uh, we also believe that we have to share it at some point. I'm not saying 50-50, yeah, but we, we, we are thinking of it, yeah, to share the, let's say, the damages. We are also considering uh, other legal actions, like in Austria, there is a possibility to, let's put it in a very simple words, to sue the Austrian government and claim damages. So. It's not only, uh, I would like to, to emphasize that it's the solutions that we are considering are not only, you know, considered toward or against landlords. No, no, no. We, we take different actions. We, we take different legal actions. And this is where really creativity of lawyers come uh, uh, up. And, uh, and for example, in um, Hungary, our uh, country manager is very creative. The, there was an announcement that uh, the stores could be open from 4th of May. He opened them on, uh, from 2nd because it said it's allowed. It's just not uh, the customer is not allowed to come in. So, you know, it's, <laughs> um, you know, different solutions. And I can give you like a little from the Swedish perspective, for example. Mm -hmm. Because uh, you will laugh, but I came here by boat. As James, you mentioned, yeah, <laughs> we can't travel by plane now, so I had to take a boat from Poland to Sweden, which which is running, yeah. So this is oh, great. great. Uh -huh. and, um, and and what about Sweden? I'm here now in the south, so south is uh, not like Stockholm suffering for a lot of uh, as, uh, COVID, but uh, here the shopping malls are open but the mentality of people is different. They keep the distance, they keep the recommendations, they keep the, uh, the rules, let's say. When you go to like, for example, one of the biggest shopping malls uh, near to uh, where I am now, it's called Vela, near to Helsingborg. The stores are open from 12 to 6 p.m. And everybody is keeping one or two meters uh, distance because this is in their nature. You don't have to tell them that. Right. They're doing it anyway, yeah? Uh -huh. This is interesting. This is very different from London where we actually have a lockdown, but no one is keeping it. <laughs> All right. Well, yeah, exactly. So, so, I think so there is going to be, I think there is going to be lots, lots of changes in the, in the way that we, uh, I, you know, we're not going to go back to the previous normal. We're going to enter the new normal. Um, and I think that's the same with uh, the relationship between the, the, the tenant and the landlord as well. Um, you know, the, the way that we, our behaviours have changed, our shopping behaviours, uh, mm -hmm. like Uber Eats and delivery of, uh, of food, um, I, 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 that's been triple digit growth. You know? So that's been off the chart. You know, you've, but you think the question, well, you know, who's getting the income from that? Um, if it's a turnover rent, is the uh, is the landlord getting any income from kind of the home delivery, um, and and is that model going to have to change? Um, it's like Bernadine said, the, there is going to be winner, winners and losers. Um, you know, with uh, Animal closing down, J Crew announcing bankruptcy, Debenhams announcing bankruptcy, um, and everyone scrambling to uh, to get their e-commerce platforms and omnichannel platforms up and running. One of the biggest uh, impacts to, uh, to any business has got to be Primark. I think they have 365 stores worldwide and they're losing 650 million pounds per month. And by the time we get through this, they will have lost a billion pounds of income. So that's, that's just, they'll be scrambling to kind of get their omni-channel platform up and running. But then you've got to look at the overall, the bigger picture and, um, 
if there is going to be significant and sustained online grocery shopping and a lot of uh, shopping centers are anchored by uh, the supermarkets or hypermarkets um who's getting percentage of that kind of uh, that turnover if it's home delivery so i i think there's going to be some changes to the lease model uh, moving forward mm -hmm. so, so james what i mean i know it's it, it's always a fluid fluid moment but what what is let's say your your plans with with the retailers that you have now, and how do you kind of how do you prioritize them? I mean, when I was just walking through the mall, you know, you kind of get an idea of what's going on, and you know, you see the poor girl sitting in the Samsonite luggage store by herself, and probably not going to sell anything yesterday. Uh, for example, it's like how do you? I mean, you've obviously you've got your tenant mix that was you know, let's say that you were dealing with at the beginning. Now, what are you looking at is like, what stores are gonna make it or how do you decide what the, what the tenant mix should be now or what it could be? Um, well, I, I think, uh, Craig, it's, the, the, the issue is it's about, um, you know, getting the trade and getting everything up and running. So uh, the way that we've prioritized this um, uh, if previously was, um, first of all find out and i think this is what anna was um, mentioning as well that looking at what other forms of support you know ha are available so we've been um tracking um every single day we we're following every bit of um, news that that's coming out of the polish government um to see whether there's any um any reasonable um uh, <laughs> for retailers or landlords and, and things like that. Of course, I think we, we more or less gave up on that about three or four weeks ago that there was going to be anything substantial. Um, but um, for us, before we engage with the retailers, and I'm sure the retailers would also want to know before they engage with us is, you know, if either of us are getting, um, you know, assistance from, you know, outside of that one-to-one -one relationship we have with the retailers, then so that that should come into uh, into play because you know this isn't a point at which anybody here is is out to try and make money off the other. Um, I'm sure. Bernadine was right. You know there are going to be winners and losers, but um, you know our, our aim here um, is to make sure that there are as many winners as possible, um, and that's not a zero sum game. And and I think there are paths to do that. Um, the um, then following on from that, we have been um, very involved um, and, and directly involved with uh, the government uh, now. So we, we've um, had, uh, and, and, and industry bodies like PRCH, um, where um, a couple of our um, people have had um, morning conference calls directly with the Deputy Prime Minister of Poland um, uh, going through some of these issues. Um, yesterday and, and and there are some announcements coming out today about um you know various sort of signed statements if you like which um are um you know intended to keep further legislation away i don't think either the retailers nor nor the uh the, the landlords want um blanket legislation because everything every every instance is different um we in, in getting to a position, we, we brought together, um, through part of, I'm, I'm part of this group of 305, um, where we, um, you know, brought together these round tables between retailer groups, uh, industry groups, and, and lenders. Um, and that's something I've been very keen on making sure that the lenders are fully involved in, in what's going on in this process. Which is correct. And, yes. Sorry, was that Wolfgang? Was good, which is correct. So I, I think that, that the key issue is that there is a, a tight cooperation between all involved parties, as you all are mentioning, because we are sitting more on the, on the front side, the retailers with the shopping center operators, with, with, with the owners, with the investors, and also the banks. So we need to find ways to, to share the information in the most offensive way even if it was not always the case in, in, in the past. And also, I also mentioned, uh, as been mentioned of one uh, uh, of Christine uh, Bernardine, I think that there are, are winners and losers. So we have to try, as you also mentioned, that you have more winners as losers, because especially in shopping centers, if you have to reorganize everything new, uh, uh, 
what has have a good solution uh, in, in the past uh, take time and would cost a lot of money and that in a situation where we don't know how long it will take that we have vaccine and that we have a kind of normal as it was before uh, uh, the, the COVID-19 situation as we are in right now. Exactly. And that's a, that's a, a very good point, um, Wolfgang. And, and, and that, that's, we, we, we started trying to you know, pull these groups together and, and, and they finally came together. Um, and of course, there's no solutions, but what, what everyone seems to have agreed now is, is let the market uh, work and let's let us you know work with the retailers um, I do believe that there is um, you know there are plenty of ways that we can we can help particularly um, we have to look at the retailers within our centers um, particularly um, you know where, where people are worried about coming into the into the, 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 the schemes um, you know we're working very closely with all of our banks as well uh, keeping them in, informed so um, you know, and, and I think, um, you know, the, the technology will fill some of these gaps and is going to bring forward some very, um, uh, very cute solutions to um, some of these, these problems. Because the key thing for us is not, you know, six weeks ago, the, the, the problem was, you know, people selling, uh, retailers selling goods online um, and, and the, the, the landlord's not getting to see the, um, the benefit of those sales or, um, you know, but then the retailers also had a, a huge degree of, uh, of issue with um, how they were managing stocks, returns, and, and all of that sort of stuff as well. Um, now we've got another way because we have to engage those physical retailers back with the community, back with their core um, customer. Um, we have to engage the shopping centre as a result back to that core customer. Um, and that might not be in every single case being um, providing a physical space. It might be that we have to use technology to help uh, execute um, some of that engagement back outwards again. So it's a it's a different problem, um, but uh, you know there's 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 plenty of thought going around. Um, we, as you say, Wolfgang, we we need to be much more um, offensive. I mean, the the, the amount of um, sharing um, of of thought and discussion amongst our group, you know, advice. Uh, you know, amongst what you would normally call competitors, I, I guess, um, is, is sort of just dropped to, uh, to, to a, a level where people are just far more open um, about what things are. There's not collusion. Everyone's making their own minds up. They're all making the, the decisions for their own businesses, for their own centers, for their own retailer issues. Um, but it's giving us some sort of framework which we can make quick decisions in environments like this. Um, James, I think that there's a... Um... It, you know, uh, just maybe to close out soon on the on the winners and losers. I think we have to throw out lots of assumptions, lots of previous behaviors and relationships, and the way that we were, you know, operated before, and kind of uh, start all over or or rethink those priorities and parameters. Uh, and uh, uh, you know, regardless of what corner we are in from uh, which part of the ecosystem we are. We are an ecosystem, as uh, many of you have pointed out. And so, um, you know, I think there is this chance to rethink that, uh, reinvent ourselves, uh, and not necessarily be stuck in some of the, um, you know, practices that we've had in the past. I'm hopeful. I see, I see we're getting a lot of, call, a lot of, um, a lot of questions through our, our LinkedIn group here, but uh, Winston, can you say who you are? I see we've got a few questions here on the Q and A as well on Zoom, so maybe we'll start. Yeah, with thank, there, thanks, Craig. <clears throat> Good morning, everyone. I'm the editor of Europe Property, and uh, yeah, we've got some questions coming in from the audience, and um, I guess a quick one would be: uh, much has been said uh, from the panelists about retailers' business models needing to adopt omnichannel. Uh, retailing and e-commerce. Um, how how much does physical retail design need to get involved in creating a more technology-based environment? Sounds like a Bernadine question. Sure. Um, well, as, as I said, I think there's a, a major rethinking happening. I mean, there's a physical element to this where um, 
you know, even in stores, there's, there needs to be more room and um, fluidity in terms of buy online, pick up in store or click and collect as it's called in Europe, uh, as well as curbside, door side pickup uh, area for um, collecting and um, kind of staging that inventory. I think there's way more digital enablement in store that's going to be needed. Uh, we need to have uh, one view of the customer, which uh, you know pre-COVID was the holy grail. It's still the holy grail and, and ever more so. Uh, so that if I start my shopping online or I start my list or my wish list online or I'm, I'm collaborating with my friends or with my parents, uh, that then when I go into the store, my basket is still exists. I, I'm still uh, known for, you know, the, the retailer knows who I am or the mall or shopping center knows who I am when I walk uh, or drive into the property. Uh, and, um, uh, you know, Gary and I have talked about many things uh, in, the, in the digital mall around, uh, uh, you know, your parking space being reserved, your... Uh, daycare or your uh, cart or uh, stroller being reserved. Um, we have to think about every single thing, every interaction that we might have uh, with our customers. And, uh, and I guarantee there is a technology there or there to be invented uh, in order to enable that. But I was curious to interrupt you, but I think that is happening in modern shopping centers. So uh, mm -hmm. all of that, what you're mentioning is happening slowly, yes, but it is happening. And maybe with this COVID-19 situation, this will speeding up right now. But uh, a lot of that things yeah. I have seen in shopping centers and it is happening. But uh, people are conservative, most of people, in my opinion. Therefore, it has taken long and, and it is uh, a, a painful uh, uh, way sometimes. But now I think there has been a boost with this yeah, situation, which is not nice to all of us. I think there's going to be greater increase in um, augmented reality. And um, certainly I was mentioning earlier about uh, there's a double digit growth in uh, contactless. Um, I think there's also in the future, there's going to be significant increase in, uh, in self checkout, the Amazon Go type of technologies, uh, the new radar technologies, where you can go in and just pick up a product and walk out and it'll be charged to your card. Um, there are a huge amount of technologies that are coming through now where um, you don't have to try something on. Uh, it's, you use the magic mirror or the augmented reality, uh, blue lights in changing rooms to kill bacteria. Um, there's just a huge amount of, uh, of change and innovation going on. Uh, but from our side of things, what we're starting to see is more, um, more collaboration, certainly between the, uh, the retailer and the landlord, where the landlord is creating a virtual mall uh, or a digital mall. Um, and they are helping uh, more of the local retailers that don't have the capacity or ability to develop their online or digital platforms or their e-commerce platform. So uh, we're starting to see things like uh, Dubai Mall, who have done a deal, a JV with Noon, um, so they've created a virtual mall um, and that's helped more of the, the smaller and the locally uh, unique retailers um, and we're starting to see that more and more uh, globally where the landlord is, is, is acting as the, uh, as the central ecosystem for digital and, and, and e-commerce. So um, on that basis, the next uh, uh, the next challenge is, is, is sharing of data and uh, sharing of tran transactional data, uh, conversion rates and, uh, and information. Because as we see more and more um, turnover only rents, um, uh, as I said, how, we, how are we going to manage that moving forward with the increase of online? Um, certainly the large um, supermarkets and, uh, and hypermarkets if they, they have double digit growth and a, a significant proportion of that double digit growth is gonna, is gonna be sticky, then uh, it detracts from the landlord's income. Uh, the store continues to have positive trade, but the, uh, the, uh, the landlord doesn't get that income. So sharing of more data, uh, big data uh, that, that can create 
a personalised shopping experience for your customer, uh, that's vitally important moving forward. Right, yeah, great. Have, sorry, sorry to interrupt, but that is happening. But we are having one problem because the US or the, the uh, Glocanian uh, world is having a different approach than the European world. Privacy and regulations and all that things are handled in, in different parts of the world differently. Yeah, I fully agree. In, like in the UAE, um, there's a legal, uh, you don't have to share data. Uh, it's the same in Russia. Uh, I was in Russia for a few years and, and retailers do not legally uh, have to share any data with the landlord. Um, it's like that in a number of countries, but that is going to have to change uh, quite rapidly as we, as we evolve and we evolve very, very quickly and we have the new reality. Right. Somehow correct. Well, it's, and, and, and also with Roto and the uh, kind of privacy laws, they've sort of been put on, side, uh, put on the side at the moment, I think, just tracking some of the, uh, what, what's happening with the virus. So we'll see if those come back into place. Um, we're getting close to the end of our hour here. I see we're already a couple minutes over. Um, and I'd like to just kind of get everyone's final comments. Th Thomas, maybe we'll start with you. Um, but just one, one question as well. When, when, you're, when you're talking with clients, and I might have asked you this before, but when you're talking with shopping center owners, are they saying, yeah, we need another great um, light, lighting, uh, lighting experience and great stuff for Christmas? Or are they saying, please take out our old stuff from last year, put it up again, let's make it as nice as we can, but as cheap as we can? What's the, what's the, um, the, the feel on the market now? Uh, Greg, you correct. It's a very difficult time for us and uh, that's uh, I want to mention because there are a lot of discussion what you had now about retailers, landlords, and I think it's also important that uh, uh, the atmosphere and that, that the landlords and also the marketing budgets will be not uh, hold on the whole time, that there will be some investments. It's not easy. Uh, it's, it, there should be a support on, on, on different ways, also on this uh, service provider like MK Elimination and others. You can see at the moment, everybody's waiting what's going on in May and June. Uh, there will be decisions quite late in, 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 in August uh, if they want to invest. It will be smaller scales. Uh, we need to adapt to this. And uh, I think uh, we need to give a good feeling to the customers. There will be not big uh, budgets this year there will be smaller budgets uh, it's a, a big change also in our industry and um, i have a big uh, uh, hope that uh, the industry industry especially the shopping in the scent industry will not uh, drop all the money uh, that they will invest a little bit uh, otherwise it will be uh, a hard time to survive yeah well, i mean the shopping center still it has to be a happy place to go like Christmas shopping and things like that as well, I would imagine. Uh, Anya, give us uh, kind of your perspective as you're doing the, these global deals and dealing with all kinds of stuff around um, different legal aspects. How do you see the, the global expansion or the global survival of, of uh, CCC, let's say, going, going forward, yeah? Well, uh, basically, I, I believe it will, it will, it has to go more in e-commerce because we are uh, in the same group with Al Buvia, and Al Buvia is really you know, doing very well in all the countries, I believe, more or less. So uh, CCC goal is to go more and more e-commerce online in Hungary, Czech, Slovakia, Romania. These are the main markets because those are the markets where uh, the client understands us. I mean, the shoes are selling pretty well because the design and, you know, the, the I don't know, the, the the likes and the same the same models are uh, appreciated at the same market like in Poland. Mm -hmm. So this is one thing. The other thing is uh, in uh, Russia, for example, we are terminating and discussing the contracts very hard because there, this is the type of the negotiations you do. You sit at the table and you negotiate very hard and there are like some of the rent-free periods already negotiated. So it's a different approach and it's different in all the legal systems. And actually, I would rather say, don't be, don't follow the legal system. I mean, we have to think about uh, some solutions that will work on global markets. The, 
despite of the regal systems actually so we are really creating now the 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 new world i mean the new leases like you gary said there has to be the the, the new model of the lease agreements or maybe the the payments yeah basically and the, mm -hmm. the way we work and you already you are probably familiar with uh, El Bovia stores some time ago they came up with the idea there was actually they had award, been awarded a lot for that that the 80 percent of the store is a like a warehouse yeah 20 percent of the store is just a display area but not with the shoes with the laptops like ipads that you can order the shoes coming from the warehouse in they said 183 seconds sure. so maybe maybe this is the future because then you can regulate how many people come in can come out and this is the way you can maybe sell more in this, let's say, offline and online uh, solution and experience at the same time. Right. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Uh, Jan Hamel, let's go to you. Uh, kind of give us any comments or any uh, kind of pearls of wisdom you have about the, the food industry that you're in here and uh, how you see it going forward. Yeah, I absolutely agree that the fast changes in uh, uh, using apps and pre-orders, click and collect, uh, is necessary to come. I think uh, all of us, uh, it's contactless uh, in terms of ordering, in, it's contactless uh, in terms of uh, picking up. So I believe uh, there will be a huge uh, change of using uh, apps and uh, LCD displays to order. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, as for Fruitissimo, all brands have to set up uh, a new strategy. For us, is we have this uh, strategy for e-commerce. So we have a special products uh, as a prescriptions, as a packages for e-commerce. We deliver to people, to their homes and offices. Then we have the physical stores and shopping centers with uh, not the same products, but just a part of the product. And then we have a product for a retail. Uh, I mean, outside of our own network, which are also a little bit different. So we have to set up a strategy in terms of product for different channels and follow it. For Fruitissimo, I believe there will be a little bit more stores and shopping centers, but more online. So I think we have to close a couple of our stores and wait, uh, wait a little bit for further expansions uh, in the markets we are presented. And uh, for uh, entering new markets, I see the strategy that there will be a connection with uh, the delivery in the first beginning and uh, with entering the market, also with the, the food delivery in the beginning, not as the second or third step for us. Okay, thank, thanks a lot. Um, Carolus, uh, th again, thanks all for joining us. It's great to have an investor that's that's doing well and collecting 95% of the rent. So is this is, do you see this next few months as an opportunity to, to pick up a few more locations that maybe were just too expensive over the last 12 months, or uh, are you talking with some potential uh, uh, looking at more product to buy? Absolutely, I think I, I'm, in general, I'm a guy whose glass is half full, so I see it as an opportunity. Of course, it's, it's a tough, unprecedented times, but definitely this will bring opportunities for, for investors like us. And as a business, you know, sell leaseback is a, a long income business is very counter cyclical. Mm -hmm. So definitely creates opportunities for us if you say if you know we're gonna see a flurry of deals in the next couple of months, I don't think so. But I definitely expect to see a flurry of deals and especially sell leads back towards the second half of the year, autumn, uh, and by end of the year. So I think second half of the year, end of the year is gonna be really, really busy. And especially for us who are cash buyers, so we don't need third third party financing, it will definitely make it easier to do acquisitions uh, and especially for businesses who you know need liquidity and they can't get financing you know in certain markets you know bank lending has completely you know dried up and it's not there anymore and, and that gives us even more opportunities so yeah I, i'm very positive mm -hmm. yeah i would imagine the lease the the finance and the uh, lease back opportunities are going to grow as well you yeah? mm. That, like I said, we're already seeing a couple of them coming to the market. You know, you, someone mentioned Primark. You know, these guys can do a sell lease back to if they need, uh, you know, liquidity. And a lot of fashion retailers going to do that. So, uh, I'm certain there will be opportunities for for all the market players. Right. Wolfgang, it's great to have Ernst on our on our panel to get a you know another perspective from the banking side. 
Um, how do you see things going forth? Any any kind of pearls of wisdom for uh, that you're dealing with clients and dealing with these big projects and these big, uh, you know, assets? I, I, I think our goal is pretty simple. I, I think we are now all, that means really all, in uncertain times. So we don't know what will happen and how long it will take that we get back to some kind of normality. Therefore, it is the goal of, of Erste Group to service our clients to survive uh, these this times and, and find ways how we share that. And, and we think uh, we as bank has also to, to, to uh, put our share uh, to, to, to make things survive because at the end of the day, it would not help anyone uh, if, if there is a, a, a big disaster or whatever happening. Uh, the problem what we are facing is that what, what is the problem for all of, of, of the participants, we don't know how long it will take uh, and if we have seen the worst time or if the worst time is ahead of us. So that's what I can say is the goal of the bank is to service our clients and find ways and what is most important, and as Holzberg said in, in, in our discussion, that there is an open communication so that we know uh, and find ways together uh, with, with all related party uh, uh, and find a solution. So that, that, that's a simple way that that's what, what our intention is. Great. And, and Bernadine, if you can give us any final comments of how all the, these shopping centers, we have quite a few of the shopping center owners online, but also Maybe for the retailers, they're probably already doing something, but some of the things for the shopping center owners that uh, um, that you can suggest or that a solution that you can give them for, you know, making their online business better yeah? or starting it in some cases. Well, thanks. Thanks for that tee up. And as you know, we are uh, always going to speak about digital first. Uh, but digital first does not mean just e-commerce. I think it just means it's a, it's a tool in order to create that omni-channel or that customer first uh, relationship. Um, you know, I think the days of, uh, of being an ostrich and, um, you know, focusing on the physical only are, are over. Um, as uh, someone said, when their, when their mom and dad are now ordering online and doing Zoom calls and uh, you know, uh, shopping and, and behaving that way, then the, the world is going to change. I think, you know, my, my last piece of advice to a certain extent is, um, uh, and as Wolf, uh, Wolfgang said, you know, every, this isn't new. Every, there are people doing this now. Um, there's innovation already in the marketplace. And to a certain extent, our teams have probably been uh, innovating or telling us uh, what we should be doing and aspiring. Uh, and I encourage us to sort of get out of the way and let, um, you know, let our teams kind of innovate uh, and, uh, you know, and come back at this kind of uh, aggressively and smartly. The, uh, one of the largest retailers in the US right now, Target is having strategy sessions three times a day, every day, seven days a week. And so that's the kind of MO and that's the kind of, um, you know, um, space we need to create for it so that we have no assumptions. Every day is different. New information comes in and uh, we need to be uh, a lot more agile. Right, right. Great. Well, thank, thanks for that. Yeah, I mean, Zoom call. To tell you the truth, I hadn't heard about Zoom two months ago. Uh, <laughs> James, um, wrap us up here with uh, some great pearls of wisdom for shopping center owners and how to get through this. Well, I, I thought maybe, um, uh, Craig, I, I, I will keep it short, but I'll, I'll quote uh, Winston Churchill at the end of the Battle of Alar Main, where he said, this is the <laughs> end. Um, it's not even the beginning of the end, but it might be the, um, the end of the beginning. Mm -hmm. So I think where we're, where we're sitting now, there's still a hell of a lot wanting to go. Uh, we can only do it in, in, in um, cooperation with uh, well, you know, uh, up until yesterday, that, that cooperation was heavy between um, government, um, retailers, landlords and lenders. Uh, we've now brought the public into that equation and we need to work very closely with them as well. And I think this is all we can do is go forward. Great, great. Okay, thanks a lot. Paul, I see you're up here in my top corner and I was, I was ignoring you for a bit. So tell us a little bit about yourself and what we've got coming up. 
Yes, uh, Paul Count, Europe Property, and uh, the name of this forum is Adapting to a Digital Future, and of course we've had to do that here at Europe Property because our business was conferences, um, forums, and events in the real world, and um, it's going to be a long time, we think, until we're going to be able to do those types of events uh, in five-star hotels until the airlines start traveling and stuff. Um, so we've adapted, this is part of our adapt adaptation of forums, uh, utilizing Zoom and YouTube and LinkedIn. And um, we also have, I'm just going to share my screen with you. We have also adapted this event, which will be happening on the 21st of May. This is the event that we should have done actually in Bucharest um, in March. And it's the Southern and Eastern Europe um, Real Estate Awards. And it's going to be online in virtual broadcast on YouTube, utilizing Zoom and some other social media platforms as well. It's going ahead at 19, 1900 CEE time. And um, we're looking forward to that. We're, we're rehearsing it every day at the moment. And uh, this is how we are adapting to a digital future. Great. All right, well, we definitely would like to uh, thank, um, thank, our, our, thank Bernadine and, and Gary for our uh, fight for uh, fit and for being a sponsor of this event for Fit for Commerce. Um, I'd like to invite, uh, thank all of our guests from, uh, which I'm just looking at them now, from, Fis from uh, Facebook and from uh, LinkedIn. Thank you for joining on this there. Of course, from Zoom, it looks like we've got about 30 or 40 from Zoom on, or we add up to 40. So thank you all for joining as well. I know we've got some other questions and stuff, but we really try to keep these to an hour, and we're at an hour and 22 minutes. So I know you guys all have crisis and things to deal with and business to do. So. Um, big round of applause for our panelists. Thank you very much for your time and uh, energy. We hope you'll also join us on the join us for the uh, the awards. That's more of a sit at home, watch it on your big screen TV with uh, you know whatever you want to drink and whatever you want to eat is uh, you know is is it's even better. Um, so th thank you all again. Um, I think we'll just wrap it up with that. Um, yeah, Paul, thanks for plugging us and everything. And again, Bernadine, thanks for joining us. I know it's early. Gary, if you've got any final last comments to make, please throw them in now. Uh, yeah, thanks, Craig, uh, and thank you, uh, other panelists. It was uh, it's been a it's really interesting and topical debate. Um, I'd, I'd just like to add that the futures. It, it has been said that the future is already here. It's just unevenly distributed, and that supports what Wolfgang was saying and um, and Bernadine has been saying. Uh, we, the, we, the technologies exist. We just need to um, amalgamate them into a, uh, a digital and physical ecosystem for the, the, the customer journey and the customer experience that is, uh, that is seamless. And, um, and that's what we're here to do, working with retailers, uh, landlords, uh, meeting place owners. Right, great. Okay, well, someone, so, well sorry? I just said, well done, no. Okay. Well, great. Some people were asking me, I can just see we have 67 on Facebook and 156 on LinkedIn. People watching us now, there were some questions before. So great. Thank you very much. Uh, we're going to do the, we'll do the retail forum another, we'll get together for another hour, probably in about five or six weeks, unless uh, something else pops up dramatic again. But uh, we'll, we'll send you guys some information and hopefully we'll We'll all be have some more, you know, some more information to, to say up. So we'll probably we'll see most of you in five or six weeks at the next retail forum. So enjoy the rest of the day and thank you all for your time. Bye everyone. Bye bye. bye, -bye. Cheers. 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 Thanks. Cheers. 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 Okay. Bye. Bye.